<clears throat> Today's topic is sound waves. Now, in sound wave, <clears throat> there are two aspects that we have to see. Let's say you take a tuning fork, and if you strike it, sound waves are produced. When sound waves are produced, the pressure at different points are different. The pressure fronts, which is defined as P maximum, uh, P naught is the maximum uh, pressure front. Cos omega T min minus XV. <clears throat> this must be a very familiar term to you as we have seen in strings also, the same thing, except that the amplitude is substituted by uh, pressure amplitude, everything else is same. So this is the pressure front, which is used in uh, sound. And then another thing is, since the wave moves in X direction also, so uh, we have another front, which is defined by distance or displacement. Again, it is very similar equation. sin omega x minus v. This, this represent how pressure varies. This represent the direction <clears throat> in the direction of x. And again, this is the amplitude. And this gives the displacement of any particle at any t, any time, and any x. Now there are a few other things, a few other terms in sound waves in which are Pressure can also be written as beta SW omega cos omega T e minus XV divided by V. And what is this? <clears throat> This P and this P are same. B is bulk modulus. S0 we have seen other again, angular velocity. And this V, and this V is velocity of sound. And velocity of sound can also be written as I'm not going into derivation for the sake of simplicity. This again is velocity of sound. This is B bulk modulus. And this is the density of media in which the sound waves are traveling. And <clears throat> this particular expression is applicable only for fluids. And for uh, solids, there's a similar expression. Instead of beta V <clears throat> bulk modulus, we have Young's modulus. This is Young's modulus. And this is applicable only for solids. There are many forms in which we can express velocity of sound. Another way to express is this is gamma. Gamma is standard CP by CV. 
this is pressure this is density of medium in which the waves are <coughs> traveling another expression is v is equal to gamma ct where gamma is same as this gamma c is some constant t is absolute temperature in degree kelvin now <clears throat> both these equations are applicable for adiabatic compression or very fraction applicable to just to explain what is adiabatic and what is radi fraction what happens is <clears throat> when when sound waves are generated the media let's say the air immediately air, the density the air immediate to this is more denser compared to layers of air far away so this is compression and what may happen at some other time the same area may become rarer rarer means and and other portion is denser this is denser portion we call it under compression this is rarefied so <clears throat> and this this process of uh, area becoming compressed area becoming same area become rarefied keeps on happening now when this keeps keeps on happening so fast that there is no loss of heat this is adiabatic condition so for such change such adiabatic process these two expressions are valid for finding the expressing the uh, velocity of sound another is intensity of sound intensity of sound is defined as pressure amplitude this is pressure amplitude this is again <clears throat> density of media this is velocity of sound okay so this is how you define intensity of sound <clears throat> sometime or the other you must have heard the term decibel what is a decibel <clears throat> decibel is is a mathematical term defined as ten times log of intensity divided by a standard intensity this is intensity of sound and this is reference intensity of sound where beta is zero <clears throat> and i is zero is also defined as this intensity has some value 
which is ten to the power minus twelve watts per meter square. So intensity is intensity is energy per meter square per unit time. Now, like uh, <clears throat> in strings, we have studied uh, sending waves. In sound, also we have exactly similar phenomena, but slightly in a different way. And we again have this phenomenon of standing and vibration in air columns. We have already seen that, <clears throat> uh, let's see, there are, let's take two waves. One is P1, which is defined as P0 sine omega T minus pi. This is one wave, one wave. Another wave is P2, which is defined as <clears throat> since the sign of x and t are different, so this is going in positive x direction. And there is another way of going in the opposite direction. Since the sign of x and t are same, this is going in negative x direction. <clears throat> and when they interfere with each other, you get the algebraic sum of the two which is P1 plus P2. And mind it that these two waves which are traveling opposite to each other have the same pressure amplitude and angular frequency. This becomes P0 sine omega Okay, and if we simplify it, it becomes two times P naught it simplifies to this equation, which is a same as two P naught. Mass kx into where k is <clears throat> this portion. Now let's find out <clears throat> some expression for finding intensity of sound waves. We have already seen the displacement is defined as this. And pressure is defined as Pressure amplitude times then work done. <clears throat> Suppose you have 
a cylinder with a piston if you are trying to compress this gas what is the work done work done will be pressure into area of this piston into the distance it the, the distance this piston travels right and if we take <clears throat> rate of work rate of work will be per unit time this will be your work per unit time taking this analogy what will be our work done here it will be work done will be pressure times area into ds by dt same as this okay <clears throat> so this becomes e is p not cos omega into area into ds by dt differential of this with respect to time which will be omega times s not cos omega okay <clears throat> now this is also equal to a times b omega square cos square this is a simplification of this on substituting something with beta bulk density now you see clearly uh, this equation is divided into two parameters one is this one is this okay <clears throat> now if we see the average of this function the average of this function over full cycle is about is exactly one half so what we can do is we can write that work done per unit time is ab to b okay and <clears throat> work per unit area per unit time becomes is also equal to b 4 pi square you can see square as u square divided by 2 this is because we substituted omega what is omega omega is the angular velocity by t same as ut <clears throat> you can see and um, sorry 2 pi and frequency so this value of omega which is 2 pi frequency we substitute here which is this portion the square will be 4 pi square omega square we substituted this value here okay <clears throat> now this becomes 2 beta pi square frequency square displacement amplitude square divided by v <clears throat> we also know that p0 
pressure amplitude is also defined as bulk density times some constant S0. So S0 becomes T0 by BK is equal to T0 B by 2 pi beta frequency. And we also know <clears throat> beta is equal to rho v square. So our work per unit area, per unit time becomes I, which is P naught square. Now, if we substitute the value of beta from here, what we get is This is our power, where this is the <clears throat> pressure amplitude. This is the density of media. This is the velocity of air. Right? So, I is equal to P naught square 2 rho V is an expression for intensity of sound wave. Now, while studying sound, two particular uh, apparatus are very uh, important to us. One is called closed organ pipe. Why is it called closed organ pipe? Is because we have a structure, a pipe type st structure, which is closed at one end. And how vibration are set up? We have a source of sound, for example, a tuning fork or any source which creates frequencies. They travel up and down this column. <clears throat> now, We have a tuning fork which is vibrating. So what happens is it produces waves which go travel this way down, then get reflected by this closed end and travel back. Again, go to the open end, it gets reflected again. So this is the complete journey of one cycle. Starting from here, let us say A goes to B, gets reflected, goes to D, and then <clears throat> starts going down at E. This is, the, this is complete one cycle. So let us see when a sound wave starts its journey from A and back to E, uh, what are the difference in phase changes in the sound wave? So first of all, 
the sound wave, wave has, if we take this as L, length of the pipe is L, it certainly has traveled twice the length, okay? So what is the phase difference because of 2L? Phase difference because of, now if we totally calculate the phase difference on account of traveling 2L, we have a phase difference of 2 pi when a wave travels lambda distance. When it wave travel lambda distance, there's a phase difference of pi y because if wave starts from here and goes comes back to its normal mean position b, the distance traveled is lambda and it start starting from theta is equal to zero, became 90 here, became 180 here, and 360 again here. 360 means same as zero. So it, it covered two pi angle for traveling lambda distance. So this is for traveling lambda distance. And if it travels so much, this is the difference created on account of just making one trip down and one trip up. Okay. What happens is <clears throat> when it hits this closed end, there is no phase change. But when it comes back and goes back again, at this place, there is a phase change. And during this phase, this is, there is a phase change of pi by two, pi. So the total <clears throat> uh, phase difference is so much. Now we know this, this is 4L pi by lambda plus pi. Now we know for constructive, interference, the difference between two waves, the phase difference between two waves should be uh, zero, two pi, etc. In fact, so <clears throat> Uh, we don't take zero lambda dis difference. Uh, trigonometrically, it is possible, but we don't take zero because there will be some finite L which will not let this condition happen. So our, for constructive inter interference, we will have phase difference as 2n pi, where n is 1, 2, Three and so on and so forth. Which means if we see the sine wave, where is this? <clears throat> the difference should be 2 pi. If the two waves are having, this is one wave, <clears throat> and the second wave also starts in the same fashion. This will cause constructive interference. Now, this there there is certainly difference between phase difference between this and this, but unless they travel together with a phase difference, they will not be constructive. They will not be constructive interference. For the con the condition for constructive interference is no matter what whatever the phase difference is, but it should be a multiple of two n pi. If there is a difference of two and pi, two different waves will travel together. So <clears throat> our difference of two and pi of lambda of delta phase difference is we have seen this is four.
plus pi or pi or L is equal to where where n is one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Or if we want to include zero. <clears throat> then what we'll have to do is we'll have to slightly change it. This can also be written as, in this case, n can be 0, 1, 2, 3. Whichever way you, you express it this way, then you have to be careful that n, your n starts from here. If you want to use this expression, then n starts from 0. <clears throat> We know our frequency is velocity divided by lambda. So our velocity becomes V. And what is our lambda? <coughs> mm. Our lambda is 4L divided by it becomes V. This is our generic expression for frequency vis-a-vis -vis length of the organ pipe. Just to make it clear, this is our lambda. In this case, <clears throat> n is 0, 1, 2, 3, because we have used this expression. In this expression, n goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, as a special case, when n is equal to 0, what we get is our fundamental frequency. This is called fundamental frequency. <clears throat> now, what are the other modes in which it can vibrate? These are the other modes which it can uh, vibrate. This is our fundamental. Fundamental mode. This is the first overtone. This is the second overtone. <clears throat> and in that case, if we see n was zero, n is one, n is two, right? Now what then, next thing is, as we have seen that we have seen the treatment in case of a closed organ pipe. Is there any other type also? Yes. The other type is open. Open organ pipe. As the name suggests, it's an organ which is open. Open means it is open at both the ends. It looks like something like this. It's a tubular structure, open pipe, which is open at both the ends. Now how it works is, <clears throat> you have a source, sound source, which is produced. The sounds travels from, let us say, point A, goes all the way up to the bottom. At this place, it has an interface, 
it hits the interface and gets reflected it starts this upward travel journey again it hits an interface here and it starts traveling backwards so a point a starting from here goes to b gets reflected here starts is traveling upward at d again it hits an interface gets reflected and starts its journey backwards so this is a complete journey of a wave in a open pipe open pipe organ now let us see <clears throat> what is the phase difference in a wave starting from here when it starts here goes here all the way back to e what is the phase difference it can suffer one is in on account of travel okay let's assume that this is the length of the pipe then on account of distance distance it travels to well all right and we know that <clears throat> there is a phase difference of 2 pi if you travel a distance of lambda and if you travel a distance of 2l it will be 4 pi l by lambda okay is there any other uh, uh, anything else which contributes to phase difference yes there are two reflections one takes place at this place one takes place at this place there is a phase difference because of this reflection there is a phase difference of pi again there is a similar reflection here the phase difference is pi so the total phase difference is lambda is equal to 4 pi l by lambda plus pi here and pi here 2 pi what is 2 pi phase difference 2 pi phase difference means no phase no no phase difference because in 2 pi this is a wave if it travels from a to b it has covered 2 pi distance but at b again <clears throat> it is same it is in same phase as it was at a so the total phase difference is zero because it has traveled one full wave so you can say total phase difference of r is 4 pi l by and again <clears throat> if you see for for constructive interference delta is 4 pi l should be 2 n pi which means l is equal to n pi by 2 Here n is equal to one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Or this is for fundamental frequency in general. Our nu will be n v divided by two l. and how do how do these uh, waves uh, interference look like <clears throat> it looks like this this is our this is when n is 1 n is 2 n is 3 now these points are nodes where in this place this place are anti nodes 
this is the first overtone here you have these this node this node these are anti nodes you can have next overtone wherein we have this 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 as nodes this and these are anti nodes now there is a small correction earlier <clears throat> this n is not zero this is n is equal to one n is equal to two and minus three the treatment exact i mean it's is quite similar to this open pipe right now in sound there is another uh, very interesting and peculiar phenomena of beats what is beat i mean if, if i hum it it is something like that so uh, when two waves same amplitude but slightly difference in frequency travel in the same direction for example this is one wave the second wave we also have the second wave traveling but with a slight frequency difference in such a case <clears throat> what you hear is the sound that i produced before waxing and waning sound which is called beats let's see how they are produced uh, mathematically we have seen let's take this as one wave take another one here this is one the omega is slightly different in both the one one is different from the other it's very slightly so p1 plus p2 becomes okay <clears throat> now it can be also written as mind both both uh, waves have got the same pressure amplitude they should have same pressure amplitude and very similar frequencies not same but very close to each other this becomes p not cos Omega minus omega two by two. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if we designate uh, as delta, small change in frequency, and since <clears throat> omega one and omega two are very similar to each other, 
we can take as omega. So P1 plus P2 becomes 2P0 cos delta frequency by 2 into sine x by v. This becomes If we write <clears throat> this as A, meaning thereby if A is equal to then It becomes A times right now, as we have mentioned before, <clears throat> this difference in omega compared to omega is very less, meaning thereby. This is much less than compared to omega itself. This is a condition. Now, <clears throat> what will be our frequency of amplitude variation? If we take this as now, <clears throat> what we have seen that in one cycle, we will hear a high sound and in this second cycle, in the same cycle, we hear low waning sound. So high, one high plus one low is one cycle, which means in one cycle, we have two, two frequency. Normally, it should have been, if we take this as just take absolute value of these two. Since in one cycle, we will we'll hear two waxing and meanings, so this becomes twice, or frequency of Waxing and waning is two pi. This frequency of waxing and waning is called beats. Frequency of beats. Another interesting phenomena in sound is called Doppler effect. I'm sure all of you at some time or the other must have been waiting at the bus stop or car station or train station. And when train or bus or car starts coming towards you, you see the frequency increasing. 
Mm. And suppose a car goes past you, it is something like that. Mm. Mm. So when it approaches you, the frequency seems to increase. This is source object. And when source goes away from you, frequency decreases. This is called Doppler effect. <clears throat> that means if you, if you have a source and an observer, it depends who is moving which way. One condition is that the observer is stationary and source is approaching observer or going away from observer. This is one condition. Second condition could be the other way around. Meaning, source is stationary, observer is going towards source or going past the source, going away from it. So <clears throat> if we generalize uh, an equation, the apparent frequency that we hear is given by a formula called the apparent frequency that you hear is this is velocity of sound this is velocity of observer towards source, obviously. And this is <clears throat> velocity of source approaching observer. It is minus velocity of uh, source if it is approaching observer and if it is going away from observer the sign will change same thing here now <clears throat> this whole thing is also This is the whole thing is multiplied by U naught. The original frequency of source. We have seen we have a source here and we have an observer here. Is it always necessary that both of them should move along the straight line joining them? Then only you will see a Doppler effect. What if, for example, let's say source starts moving at an angle. Will you still hear the Doppler effect? Oh yes, you will still hear the Doppler effect. The only thing you have to be careful is that <clears throat> if this is the velocity of source, the velocity of source, that component of velocity, of, you have to take that component of velocity of source, which is in line with source and observer. Meaning thereby, if let us say the source has a velocity of u and it makes angle theta, then the actual velocity of source would be 
cos theta. <clears throat> Similarly, if observer starts moving, not in the same direction, but in a different uh, direction, let us say, you have source, you have observer, this is a straight line joining them. The observers, instead of moving, <clears throat> along the line joining the two, then same thing, if it is theta, then you have to, the, or this is the um, velocity of observer. Then the component of velocity of observer, which is in line with this, this has to be taken, which will be zero cos theta. And you will hear the Doppler effect. Let's see our sources here. Our observer is here. Now, <clears throat> when either source is approaching observer or observer is approaching source, wind starts blowing. We had our expression of apparent frequency as Will it still hold? No, it will not still hold because <clears throat> wind will change the velocity of sound. How will it change? Let's say this is our source, this is observer. Source is moving towards observer and so is the direction of wind. So the observer, for observer, wind is assisting the velocity of air. So <clears throat> in this situation, the velocity to be used here will be velocity of sound in air, still air, plus velocity of wind. If it is the other way around, <clears throat> let's say the wind is not blowing in this direction, the wind is blowing in this direction, then our apparent velocity will be minus. Basically what you have to see is, you have to <clears throat> clearly see the direction of wind. And the direction in which sound is to be heard. <clears throat> if they, they are in line with each other, if they are uh, the direction of wind and the direction of direction in which the sound is to be heard is same then the <clears throat> velocity gets added, otherwise the velocity will get subtracted. Uh, many a times you must have heard, <clears throat> if you're a aircraft uh, enthusiast, 
There is a term called Mach number. Actually, it appears in many places in physics also. <clears throat> what is Mach number? Mach number is basically a ratio of velocity of the subject to the velocity of sound in air. So if I say <clears throat> I got a Mach number of this plane is fly, flying with a Mach number of two, it means it is flying twice as fast as speed of sound in air. It's just a comparison. And why <clears throat> Mach number is important? Because the moment your Mach number exceeds one, you have different type of phenomena occurring. So that is why Mach number is important. 